the discussion that we will be having today is just really more going to be on the 10 DLC registration and the spam remediation process that we have in Resimply. Ten DLC registration, of course, still ongoing. I don't think that there is even like plan of stopping it because it's implemented across. Um, by the way, I am Danielle. My Zoom appears to be Sharad Zoom, so I'm Danielle. Some of you may actually know me. Um, I'm from customer support of Resimply, and I handle Ten DLC. Any concerns for Ten DLC in Resimply? And of course, um, some of inquiries for spam remediation. All right, so for 10 DLC registration, I know everyone's aware. If not, then just to give you a brief of a background of it, um, it is actually um, a requirement for you to be able to send out text messages. So this is you know, being implemented by carriers across the US. And this is of course to um, make sure that outbound texting is being regulated because as you all know like over the years there has been like a lot of issues already of spam messages circulating being sent out by businesses and uh, eventually of course like the carriers will have to regulate it make sure that um, those messages that are sent out are you know compliant um, on the regulations that they have implemented. So recently, in our case, like in Resimply, we moved over to our service provider now, which is Twilio from Plevo. So um, we've been noticing that there has been a great support provided by Twilio in terms of the 10 DLC registration. So for the process of 10 DLC registration, um, we were still given a time frame of two to four weeks for the registration time frame. So that's two to four weeks. There's no exception to that. There is also no option in terms of expediting the process. It has to undergo, you know, the regular process, which is, you know, implemented by uh, the carriers, which is two to four weeks. Now, if your first question is that, um, like, is it safe to register to 10 DLC first? before doing anything with the phone numbers that you will be using for marketing campaigns? The answer is yes. If you are actually like more on doing your follow-up text messages or follow-ups through text messages, then it's best for you to make sure that you're all approved and verified for 10 DLC. For those who wanted to ask for uh, the statuses of their 10 DLC registration with us, please uh, put in your email address you know, the ones that you have for your assembly accounts. All right, now going back into the discussion. So for 10 DLC registration, keep in mind that it's just for outbound texting. It doesn't affect your inbound calling, outbound calling, and even inbound texting. So it's just for outbound texting. I know that everyone's very particular that, you know, if a lead would text, of course he would text back, right? So have to make sure you're approved and verified. Now, how are you going to be approved and verified? The carriers are very particular with accuracy and consistency of the information that you are submitting to them. So, for example, your company name is Resimply. Um, your website and email address domain should also be Resimply. Unless, of course, you have a DBA. But your DBA should also be registered with IRS. So if you would actually tell me now that you have a DBA, but it's not registered, and you are going to be using that for your website as, uh, as well as your email, I'm afraid so that registration will have to be and will be rejected by the carriers. The thing about it is that, like I've said, accuracy and consistency of the information that you are providing. Because keep in mind, this is actually with the text messages that you're sending out, which is, of course, from your company. Now, there has been a lot of sub submissions that we have that they're providing DBA, but then apparently the DBA is not registered to IRS. So it has been, you know, rejected. Now, um, you can resubmit. We can always resubmit. That's fine. But then it will take another time frame for processing. So if we have the two to four weeks, you know, for the initial submission, and then we will resubmit, that will take again two to four weeks. So it's really going to take a while. It will delay your approval. 
it will delay your verification process. So when we do the initial submission for 10 DLC, it would be best if we will get an approval for that. So it will not further delay the process. And you will be unable to use the phone number for outbound texting if you are still waiting for your approval and verification. Now for a website, um, I wanted to share a website. This is Sharad's website, by the way. This has been already accepted being compliant to the 10 DLC registration. And this website, um, this has been created, of course, through Resimply. Okay, so uh, this is Sharad's website. It's actually built through Resimply. This is a seller website. They're very particular also on the website that you are going to submit. First off, if you don't have a company, no registered company yet, you're planning to use your social security number that is not accepted by the carriers at the moment. So they're just going to process 10 DLC registration if you have a registered business. That's why they ask for EIN. If they're unable to find your, your company, the registered company, uh, that you presented in the registration, they will actually reject the registration and will ask if you could resubmit with a copy of your EIN document. So what's going to happen is that you will actually provide that to us, the copy in a PDF file type, and then we will attach it in the resubmission of your 10 DLC registration. That's for the EIN. Now, if you've declared that you have a DBA, and the, the, the carriers actually would get back to us asking for the copy of it, you need to send that to us as well because we will also attach it to your registration. Now, like I've said, if you don't have a registered DBA but you have a DBA, then you would have to make a website and an email address with your company domain, not the DBA as the domain because you will never be approved and verified for 10 DLC in that case. But I'm just speaking like I want to I wanna have a disclaimer on this. I'm speaking in terms of what we have right now in terms of the 10 DLC process that we are having with carriers to Twilio. Okay, I'm not sure if there have been any processes uh, with other applications, with other platforms in regards to it. But then again, since this is implemented across, so the regulation would be the same. All right. Uh, like I've said, if you have any questions, please just put it in the chat uh, box. Uh, this is from Dior. He, he said, do you have to have a website? Because I do not have one right now. Uh, yes, that's, that's right. You need to have a website. It's a requirement. So if you are a Resimply user, there's actually an option for you to create the website in Resimply. Um, all of the plans that we have, it offers or it includes um, a seller website that you can build through Resimply. The only thing that you will have to spend for it, that will be for the custom domain. So um, as for the custom domain, you would have to purchase it. Uh, there would be like um, options for you. Like the most popular I noticed will be from GoDaddy. There's also this application called Namecheap um, and all the other apps that offers, you know, custom domains, you can purchase anywhere from them. And then that's actually what you will use to your Resimply website, making sure it's compliant with um, the 10 DLC registration. Uh, Rob, yes, we are actually switching over to Twilio as our service provider. And um, we only have few of our numbers left with Blevo at the moment, which we will eventually, of course, transfer over to Twilio. All of our 10 DLC registration, by the way, now is processed through Twilio. We don't have any like processes for 10 DLC and Blevo anymore. Because as soon as all of the numbers are transferred over to Twilio, we will, of course, close out our Blevo account. You don't need to do anything else in your end. OK, all right. Now, going back to the website, um, this is how it looks like. This is, like I've said, this is Sherrod's website. Um, and this is already 10 DLC compliant. and our Resimply websites, we actually made sure that we have all the options um, to set it by default to be 10 DLC compliant. Um, so this is like the main page and or the home page. 
you would actually see here a contact form. And then in the contact form, you would see the opt-in text, the opt-in language checkbox. You would see it from here. Now, it is very important that you checkbox language um, in all of your contact forms in your website. If you don't have this, um, your registration would actually be rejected. Now, if you would ask, I have a website, but it's not true you. For example, it's true Carrot. Um, Carrot, actually, they're going to help you set up your opt-in text in your website. This is by far with the experience that I have with a lot of users um, inquiring about how they can update their website. So Carrot should be able to provide you support if you don't know how to go about it. Um, if there has been some challenges in your end and how to update your website, you can reach out to Carrot Support for it. Same as all the other uh, like website provider, they will help you. And this is by far like a lot of users using like different websites, um, website builders. They were able to update the, their websites. Um, if not in their end, then the support, you know, customer service for those website builders. Now, in simply, like I've said, this is already an available option when you are building your website. But if in any case, just in any case, when you're building it, you're done building it, and, and this is not included, like you haven't actually chosen, uh, you know, the option for the opt-in text language checkbox, you can let us know. We'll create a ticket for that for the website team. And of course, they will just update your website. And, and that process is just, you know, within 24 hours. So this is the homepage, um, and then you would notice a contact form there has the opt-in. And then also, there is a contact form here at the bottom. And then you would see, again, that there is the opt-in text uh, language checkbox in this form. All right. Like I've said, it should be in all of your contact forms not only in contact us page, not only in the topmost portion of the main page or homepage that you will have the form with the opt-in uh, language or checkbox. Now, if I would go to contact us, you would still see here the opt-in language or checkbox with of course the recommended text. Now, um, some of you may actually just use a very simple line, which will have um, you can send um, any text messages coming from Resimply. For example, the company name is Resimply, and you agree to our privacy policy. So a lot of those actually would have that. You know, it's just a single liner opt-in text. That should be fine. But then remember, if you act mentioned about privacy policy, you need to have a privacy policy in your website. It could not be just a statement only. It has really to be a privacy policy statement. So others actually got the rejection because when the privacy policy was checked by carriers, um, it's not the privacy policy for their companies, but rather it's like a general general privacy policy for their website builder. So like there are users, like when you click on privacy policy page, it got routed to like a GoDaddy privacy policy page that, that's not accepted. So it should be your own privacy policy. Um, if you're asking like, yeah, the, 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 are they really checking it? Yes, they, they do. And um, they, they're very particular of it. Like I've said, when you will have your opt-in language or checkbox, if it is only like, I agree to the terms and conditions and privacy policy, then um, on this part in here, the privacy policy should be like a hyperlink. It should, it can be clicked. And then when access, it should be your own privacy policy, not anyone else's. All right, so like I've said for a website, all of the uh, contact forms, it has to be with the opt-in language or checkbox. Some of you would actually have very unusual scenarios wherein um, you don't have any checkbox or opt-in in your website because your website is only like more of an information purposes website. 
Um, we have some instances of that. Uh, the submission for 10 DLC registration is more of like we submitted it manually as an escalation. And then we just stated, of course, um, that the website is more of an informational website rather than getting leads out of the website, rather than lead generating website. But, you know, that's just very unusual scenarios. I think we only encountered, you know, just one uh, so far. Uh, Devin, if you have the domain, but the website isn't up and running, that will not be accepted. The website has to be a working website and it has to be a secure website. So if it is not a working website at the moment, if you would have any option to work on it, to have it all good and working up and working, please do so. Um, in our end, when we are checking it, we will get back to you and let you know that we need a working website from you. Uh, because if not, you will just end up, you know, having your registration being rejected. And then we will be resubmitting it once again for you. That's really going to take a while. And of course, result to it, you wouldn't be able to use the phone numbers for outbound texting. If you're going to be asking more on the, the processing time frame, in our end with Resimply, we can always put up like an escalation ticket for Twilio. But then again, it's not also like an assurance that whatever is the concern will be addressed immediately or quickly. Um, Twilio also is, of course, following whatever it is that the carriers are implementing. So um, if the carriers are actually more on having all of these delays and getting you approved, you would see that your registration is still in progress for quite a while. Then that's something that in our end, we actually set up like an escalation ticket for it. But we don't really have so much of like an assurance that we get like the answer that we expect because like I've said, it is still within the carriers and that we would be depending on, you know, the approval of the 10 DLC registration. Okay, so I, I would just like to recap on what you need to actually bear in mind when you're doing 10 DLC registration. So first off, your company or your business is registered with IRS. You have an EIN. Um, if in any case you'll be asked for the copy of your EIN, you should be able to send it over for us to attach it to your registration. If you don't have a registered business, your business is not yet registered, that cannot be processed for 10 DLC registration. There is no option for that at the moment. So it has to be a registered business. You have your EIN. Um, if in any case you'll be asked for it, you, you would have to send it over and we attach it to your registration. Uh, Brian, uh, we have actually this opt-in text recommended recommended opt-in text. Uh, hold on, let me just put it in chat. Yeah, so I put it in chat for the opt-in text. Uh, this opt-in text actually is already approved. It's also the one that's recommended when like way back when we were already getting a lot of like approvals for the 10 DLC registration. Like I've said, you can always use the shorter one. Like I agree to the terms and conditions and privacy policy. That's fine. That's okay. We have approvals for that. But then your pri privacy policy should be updated. It should be your privacy policy and not the website builder's privacy policy. Okay. So the second point, um, of course, DBA. So if you have your company registered, but you have a DBA, make sure your DBA is registered also with IRS, all right? If you will be using your website and email address domain uh, you're with a DBA, you know, um, it has to be registered to IRS. If not, and that's your website and email address domain, then your registration actually might be, or I would say like based on the registrations we've submitted, it's rejected by carriers. So the carriers are actually checking, like really checking. Um, we even think that the checking is actually done manually because they're very particular with information accuracy and consistency. All right. So in terms of like you've already submitted, okay. But then again, in the middle of like the process, there is an information that 
actually cost, you know, for the registration to not be approved or verified. For example, you need like a working website uh, with opt-in language or checkbox, and you don't have that, so um, you actually uh, were not able to get approved. And then suddenly there would be some changes in your information. Like you wanna change like a lot of things. You wanna change the company name that you submitted for the registration. You wanted to actually add your DBA, which is registered by IRS. You have to get in touch with us on that. We need to actually resubmit your 10 DLC registration through the backend and provide to them all the information that you have, the new information, not the one that you originally sent over. Okay, any, any questions? Any clarifications? Okay, so if there's none, so I would continue, um, like I've said, for website and email address, the domain should be your company name, or if not, if you have a registered DBA, then you can use your registered DBA as the domain. So any resubmission for 10 DLC registration would be another two to four weeks time frame for processing. For those who just joined, um, we don't have any way to expedite that process. There is no option provided by carriers for us to create a ticket and then request, you know, to rush the registration. There, there is no option such that. If you have inquiries in terms of like uh, the, the fees for 10 DLC, so there is a one-time fee of $64. Um, $64 that's actually directly paid to the carriers. There's no portion of, of that actually goes to us or any other platforms who are doing the 10 DLC registration in behalf of their users. So the $64 that's paid to the carriers directly and um, when there would be any instances you wanna cancel your registration, um, we don't have a way to actually refund that money to you. Like I've said, it is true with the carriers and uh, that they assess the $64 one-time charge. So there's no refund that could be processed. We don't have a way to credit it because we're not paid for it. It goes to the carriers, all right? Any questions, clarifications, anything? Okay, we're good, I have all a right. regarding the domain. <clears throat> yes, Roy. If uh, my current domain is uh, with uh, Carrot, mm -hmm. it, do I have to disconnect Carrot before I'm applying it to Resimply or I can uh, start building the Resimply website and when everything look great, basically uh, kind of like close my account with Carrot? Um, it, it's really something that you will have to decide, Roy. So are you going to be using Resimply, like your, your Resimply website moving forward? If yes, then of course you will have to build your Simply website and then like onwards, that's the website that you will be using. Like of course, with your custom domain on your Simply website, and then you can decide from there if you would be still needing, you know, your carrot website or not. Because like in, in the registration process, you're only, to requ you're only required to submit one website anyways. Yeah, I, you, I meant for, for if the domain is already taken through Carrot, I was wondering if that would be an issue technically to, to oh, okay. find it. Yeah, so if your domain is already used on a different website, Roy, um, I'm afraid so there would be like, you know, like something for you to think about, you know, to disconnect it so that you can use the domain into an, a, another website like Resimply. Um, unless, of course, that you will purchase another domain, which you will use for your Assembly website. But then again, of course, the domain will still be like your company name, for example, that you're using with Carrot. If you want to like just use your Assembly website over that, then you have to disconnect your Carrot website because you cannot use that domain again with a different website builder. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're welcome, Roy. Yes, so... Like just to add uh, with Roy's concern. So if you re already have a website and then that will be true, like for example, Carrot, you have your custom domain plugin into your Carrot website, but you don't want to spend more for website 
because you have Resimply and Resimply offers a seller website included in whatever plan that you're in, then you will have to disconnect that website. And then that's the time that you could use the domain into your Resimply website. So remember in Resimply with all the plans that we offer from Basic Pro to Enterprise, there is a seller website, one seller website included. The only thing that you will spend extra for will be your custom domain. How does it work then if you have the other website, but you're saying that one's the domain's parked there and you put a new domain in with the phone system, how does that work together if you have to have the 10 DL registration with everything has to be the same? Right. Some so yes. So like Roy's um like Roy's uh, case, Anna. So um he has already a carrot website. Right now, he has a carrot website. He's using his custom domain in his carrot website. Mm -hmm. um, he's thinking of using Resimply website, building his Resimply website. So Roy would actually have to disconnect his carrot website he, if he is going to be using the same custom domain that he is currently using in his carrot. It has to be disconnected because you cannot use it in a different website if you are already using it on an existing website. So, I understand that. And that's the same thing in my situation, except the other one I haven't been able to figure out to put in the opt-in is why I'm not getting approved for the 10 DL registration. And so okay. switching it over to um, to RE Simply, even there, I guess I have to yeah, disconnect or whichever with that. But if you wanted to use a different name on a domain, I guess, doesn't it have to match the um, business name? It has to match your business name because the carriers are requiring for it to match your business name. So that was, I, I know I understand that. Uh, uh -huh. I guess how the issue is, is trying to get, uh, I guess, Ari Simply website up. I guess they, you guys did that for me in a sense, but the other one was, um, I think still up and I'm having to remember. Right. I guess um, the I, hasn't been approved, that's why. Yeah, exactly. Because um, like for the approval, um. Yeah, it's needed, like the, the opt-in text. I, I know where you're coming from on this one. Like there's already a website that you have. And, um, you know, for, for that website, by the way, Anna, because you're unable to add the opt-in language or checkbox, um, were you like able to connect with the support or anyone from that website builder to help you? You know, just for you not to, to redo everything, you know, just for you to just I add try it up to. I try to, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, I've had a hard time trying to connect with them and I haven't been okay. able to. And so um, I can go on the back end and completely disconnect and I have to go to GoDaddy and uncheck them, basically and put it to our assembly and then just get that one going that way. Yes, yes, that would be another option for you if they're being unresponsive and you're not able to update the website. Um, mm -hmm. because that will never be really accepted for the registration process. So you can just go ahead and disconnect it. And then whatever custom domain you, you use in that existing website, once it's disconnected, then you can use it in your Resimply website. Yeah. Um, if you need assistance in that, you can always directly communicate with me. Um, we have like the website team who can help, especially when you are creating your website and adding the DNS information. Um, I'll, and I, I can send you the video as well. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great if you can, because I've been trying to work with your team to try to get everything going. Yeah, it's just very slow going. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put a note in here, and I will be connecting with you regarding this. Okay. okay. What about on the phone numbers? Um, yep. Some of them that I registered for some of the different uh, campaigns I'm trying to put together, because they're still going through the 10 DL registration or whichever on that, but some of the ones that that I purchased numbers from RE Simply are showing up as uh, a detected as spam or return from mm -hmm. AT&T, whichever that. How do we go about that? Like, does that go away once the 10 DL or do I have to register a different number or what? Um, the spam actually is totally like a different thing from 10 DLC registration. So 10 DLC would just be on the outbound texting. Well, spam remediation, that's actually for numbers that are flagged by carriers or spam, whether AT&T, Tmall, Verizon. So what we do is that as part of the services that we have for Resimply, we actually submit your phone numbers to be remediated. Okay. So we have a service provider for that. 
Um, I'm also going to include you um, like for the follow-up process in the uh, spam remediation request. So what we do is that on a weekly basis, we submit uh, phone numbers for simply phone numbers to be remediated. We have third-party service providers uh, for our spam remediation process. It's submitted to the carriers. And then until, mm -hmm. of course, the spam flag will fall off. Now, the only thing about it is that we are not given 100% guarantee that the spam flag will be removed by carriers because it's uh -huh. still the carriers who would have the control over that. So they're still yeah. the one yeah, who would you know, um, who would determine if, you know, the, the spam flags will be removed from those numbers. But in our yeah. end, what we make sure is we submit. Yeah, because out of all the numbers I've registered, only one says that it's good. All the rest are being flagged as spam, and I haven't even right. used them. I just, I started to put them in. So now I'm wondering if to delete them and re-pick out a different different name, and I mean, a different phone number, and then and go from there that way. Uh, yes, there is an option for you to to replace it if you wanted to, if you haven't used the numbers yet. Okay. Yeah. So if you don't have any, have any yeah, I'm just getting ready to do my direct mail and stuff like that, and I need to sign them. But I, because they're being flagged, and that's one of the questions I had, and I haven't seen. Okay. Yeah. There. And when we have the numbers, we're given the numbers. Um, those are not like new numbers, and everyone is aware of that. So those are numbers that, uh, you know, are, are being recycled uh, to carriers, like, I don't know, what's the, like, like pond or whatever that is that we are getting the numbers from and we are being provided. So there would be numbers already that has spam flags on it. So in our end, like I've said, we submit it for remediation. We will continue to submit it until it falls off. Like I've said, there is no assurance when they will actually remove the spam flag when mm -hmm. it will be remediated. That's the thing. So there's no assurance to it. There's no guarantee. So your advice then is just delete that number and just keep trying another number? Yeah, you can delete it in your end. You can have it deleted and then just get the new phone number. Okay. Yes. It's not a high rate of all them being flagged, so. <laughs> right. But... Yeah, and if you haven't used it, that's all good. Um, You can just delete it, replace it, um, rather than, you know, having it still flag as spam. Because like I've said, in our end, we make sure we submit it for the remediation process. And we even have like just a service for, it for the spam check. We have a dedicated, you know, back end support who does the remediation, submit it for remediation process. But then again, like carriers would always have their way of like when they want to prove it, when they would actually remove the spam flag. So that's the thing, that's a challenge on it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Yes. Thanks, Anna. And yeah, I'm going to send you an email. Uh, I will also send you that dear DNS, okay? Okay, appreciate it. All right. Yep, you have any other questions? All right. So just going back to the spam remediation like to process. chime in if I could. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. Uh, but anyway, you were saying disconnect your carrot site. I believe uh, uh, that could be confusing. You don't actually have to shut down your carrot site or your carrot account. You just go to your domain provider and change the direction that you're pointing that uh, domain name. So you change your, uh, I forget what they call them, the uh, C names uh, or, or whatever you're using to point toward Carrot. You just point it toward the uh, your Resimply uh, site. You don't have to, and you can actually keep your Carrot account open. Uh, so you don't want to, you know, I just didn't want him to be uh, confused to think he has to shut down his Carrot account <laughs> before oh, he gets the domain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Just, so just Richard, point the domain name in the dire different direction. Right. So here's the thing. So I think uh, in the case of Roy, um, it, it's for him, like, you know, thinking over if you still want to have his carrot account or not. Because right. in, in that yeah. case, if you don't want to pay anything extra anymore with a different website builder, just use Resimply, then, of course, that's the time you close out your carrot account. But then if yeah. you still want to use that account, um, the domain that you will use for your Resimply website to be 10 DLC compliant, then that's the one that you will disconnect so you can use it to another website builder. And then you can just have, of course, your carrot account still open. And then you can just decide on getting like a different domain for it if you still want to continue using it. That's fine. That's, that's fine. Um, we're just actually referring to the domain. And of course, in the case of Roy, you know, if ever that, he would just choose to have Resimply website um, instead of using a carrot website. Yep. 
Okay, thanks. Yes, you're welcome, Richard. Do you have any other questions? Anything else? I think I can share here on how you can add uh, DNS to your Simply website. I'll share a walkthrough video. It's a link. And then I will also share the link to the website training, you know, for the website builder. I'll put it in the chat box. So you can just copy. Okay. So you can you can check it in the chat uh, box. All right. Um, also, just to clear things, uh, we have a lot of users who actually reached out um, and, and are expecting that 10 DLC would be approved in just a day or two. Uh, please um, bear in mind, processing time frame is two to four weeks. That is the processing time frame provided by the carriers. We just noticed that there's a lot of approvals that's happening within days. But then again, um, the, the safest time frame would still be two to four weeks. Uh, Jacob, so for the website, is this a Resimply website that you have? Oh, okay. Yeah. If it is saying it's unsecure, I think there's just information in it that you need to actually remove. But let me take note. I'll reach out to you via email in this one. Hold on. Um, I'll reach out to you via email. So if there's anything that needs to get fixed on this or look into, I will then um, communicate this over to the website team. Okay? You're welcome. Okay. Do we have any other questions, clarifications, anything? Thanks, Jacob. All right. Uh, so just to um, wrap things up, if there is, you know, if there are no questions. So for 10 DLC registration, um, you need to have accuracy and consistency with the information that you are providing for the registration process. If I may share a best practice, um, we have a lot of new users actually that, you know, they're not adding numbers yet, not texting, nothing. They just proceed in doing the 10 DLC registration. So 10 DLC registration is not something that would require you to have your phone numbers first set up in your account. Remember the registration is for your brand and for your campaign. So once that you are approved and verified for 10 DLC, and then that's the time that you get phone numbers, then the linking of the phone numbers to your active campaign would be happening in the back end, because Resimply is already integrated with Twilio for that matter. So um, if you are into like getting the phone numbers after that, you do the registration, it's okay. But then the numbers cannot be used for outbound texting unless you're approved and verified. So you would just actually encounter common scenarios um, in your 10 DLC registration when it comes back to you as not uh, being approved and verified. First of course, um, when they will ask, carriers would ask for a copy of your EIN. Second is that if they would also require you to send a copy of your DBA, if you're using a DBA. Um, third is that your website is not working, it's not secure, then the registration also will not go through. If your website has no opt-in text or no opt-in language or checkbox, that would still be a reason for rejection. If you have the opt-in text, opt-in language, checkbox, but then again, one of your forms doesn't have it, then it would still actually come back as rejected, All right? Now, if you're using an opt-in text, which is, I agree to the terms and conditions and privacy policy. Terms and conditions, privacy policy, those should be hyperlinks. So when clicked, um, anyone who clicks it will be able to access your terms and conditions page and your privacy policy page. Privacy policy page should always be your privacy policy page, not your website builder's privacy page. It calls to be uploaded in the help center. We have a folder there for, for mastermind calls. Um, Jacob, if you're not 10 DLC registered, then can you still make calls and texts? For calling, it should be working for both inbound and outbound. For texting, it would only work for the inbound texting. Um, 10 DLC is only for outbound texting. Yes. So 
it doesn't have anything to do at all with your phone is solely like a different thing. So 10 DLC registration is more of your outbound texting. Hi, Bruce. It's good to see you. It's been a while. <laughs> All right. So yes, so if you don't have any other questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me in terms of 10 DLC. That's Danielle at Resembly. I'm actually the one handling um, 10 DLC, like especially if you have different scenarios in your setup, if you have resubmission requests, please reach out to me, this Daniel at resimply.com. Um, if you have general inquiries about it, you could always reach out to support through live chat or email. Yeah, I think we're all good. The recording, it will be available in our help center the coming days. Yes. You take care too. Thanks also, Bruce. Thanks everyone. And have a great week ahead. Everyone take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.